Hi there. I want to start off this presentation by saying that although I use my intellect and Aristotelian categorization uh, to analyze the problem, I'm perfectly aware that the solution to the problem lies on the totally intuitive level, which is beyond words, uh, and perhaps even beyond pictures, pretty much beyond everything really, apart from some amorphous intuition uh, that, that, is, uh, that arises from introspection and meditation, uh, and isn't even really an emotional feeling, it's beyond even that. Uh, so, you know, uh, don't criticise me for being uh, over-rational or rationalist about this because I think the, the problem uh, is, is one which does lend itself uh, to intellectual analysis. Um, because, um, and I say that, because uh, I want to look at um, spiritualised matter, the concept of spiritualised matter on one hand, uh, which is basically symbolized by the Eucharist uh, or the, um, uh, the transubstantiation of the wafer and the blood into the bread and the uh, in, <coughs> bread and wine into the, into the body and blood of Christ on one hand uh, and, and other forms of spiritualized matter uh, and uh, materialist spirituality which is basically everything uh, in this realm which, which basically is psychic or astral uh, in nature. And I want to show that, well, it's not actually spiritual at all. It's all part uh, of the realm of the demiurge in actual fact. Uh, and I have discussed this before, but it's a point that's worth repeating often uh, until you get the distinction in your, in your mind. Um, and uh, so we start off with, with the classical uh, Gnostic definition of spirit being the good and matter being the evil. Uh, but I'm also, that, that's a sort of classic differentiation. Uh, but then the more modern Gnostic differentiation uh, comes from, uh, from Hindu philosophy, Samkhya, um, which is the, the difference between non-dualism, uh, which would belong to God and the ineffable realm, uh, and dualism, which belongs to the uh, lower dialectical worlds of, of the demiurge. And um, so I have here two sort of boxes, really, uh, to, to distinguish between uh, what I believe is something that you can distinguish between uh, morally and ontologically, uh, which is that on one hand you have uh, the, the dualistic realm of the demiurge, which is, is, which is this box here, this big box, and this little box, which is the, um, which is the spiritual realm, uh, the non-dualistic realm of God, uh, and, uh, of course, uh, into which uh, the transcendent soul um, is seeking admittance or, or going back home to, uh, or in some way connected to. Um, and, this, uh, and, this little, uh, and this little kind of jagged box with the, with the, with the, uh, with the dashed edges uh, represents a possible connection between spiritualized matter on one hand, um, which, which is perhaps a bridge between the two worlds, uh, just as the awareness of soul is a bridge between the two worlds, um, which I put in here, uh, soul God awareness. Um, and this is the kind of the one percent uh, human conscious. Um, so the hue part is going up into is soul awareness, and man is the is the awareness of matter uh, through the five senses and through perception of dreams and um and into this <clears throat> but in within this demiurge world uh well 99 percent of everything else including uh all the astral and psychic phenomena uh all the stuff about the chakras all the stuff about um you know the psychic spleen and the psychic liver uh, and all the, the the psychic part of the bloodstream uh the seven layers around the human body for example uh, all that basically belongs to the dialectical worlds um, and it called it uh, materialized spirituality uh, because uh, when you look into this uh, you find that, uh, that it actually reflects the personality and ego on one hand 
Um, and it also reflects the actual dialectical uh, nature of matter on the other. And it, so, for example, uh, you've got like a spleen, the physical spleen, and then you've got the psychic spleen. Uh, but they're all the spleen. Um, <laughs> so they all pertain uh, to matter. Uh, it's just that we sort of have this, this psychic layer over matter. Uh, but in fact, it, the psychic layer over matter encompasses matter. Um, and and it and it actually is all part of salt, uh, which is uh, which is the which is the gross matter. So that no matter how f um, refined you talk about your spiritual uh, organs and chakras and, uh, and energy fields and bioenergy fields, uh, these are all um, part of of matter. Uh, on one hand. And, of course, on the other, they're part of personality and ego. <clears throat> and so basically what I'm saying is it's partly mumbo-jumbo. Um, partly, uh, actually, well, partly tells us more about the person that believes in all this stuff um, than it does actually about the universe itself. On the other hand, um, even if it's not mumbo-jumbo, it still partakes of the realm of the demiurge uh, and is to be is a distraction uh, on, on that level. Uh, so basically what I'm, at, what I'm saying is that all the sort of psychic, astral, spiritual, ghostly, uh, immaterial, um, chakristic, um, psychic, uh, bioelectrical energy field on the one hand is all part of matter, part of the demiurge, and part of the 99% of what we are conscious of, or what we could be conscious of, uh, because granted, uh, we have to have uh, our sort of a sixth sense, uh, as, it, as it were, to detect chakras and, psych and psychic energies and ghosts and what have you. Uh, and yet this is, the psych this is the sort of intuition, the intuitional part, which is part of, of the demiurge, part of the 99%. So, part, uh, so what exists of the 1%, um, is, pos is <clears throat> the consciousness of the human part of us, uh, the soul God awareness, uh, which we can spontaneously become aware of uh, through spontaneous introspection on one hand. Um, but the big question arises is that if you take matter, uh, can matter be spiritualized? Um, uh, and, and, and for example, uh, if you take the, the blood of Christ being, uh, and, and the wine, the communal wine, is it that the wine is actually converted literally into the blood of Christ? Uh, or, is it, or it just happens in a symbolic, metaphorical, allegorical kind of way? Um, and, and, you know, meta and so it's not a literal thing. Or does it occupy a completely separate, distinct uh, discrete category uh, on some kind of intuitive level, some kind of miraculous level, uh, that it takes a special kind of higher intuition to detect. Um, and I, I, this is open to question uh, because uh, the problem with this is spiritualized matter is a concept which takes us very much into, into the more extreme ends, ends of Gnosticism, uh, because you could argue that an aborted fetus could be offered as a sacrament. Uh, you could argue that human excrement uh, could become spiritualized. Um, you, you, this takes us into the, into the Ordo Templi Orientis territory here, uh, that menstrual blood and, and all the, all the uh, substances that are ejected by the body, pus and, uh, and sweat and, 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 and things like that, and urine and feces, all these you could see in a spiritualized way uh, and you could offer them as a sacrament um, and indeed you could offer the sexual act uh, as, and acts as, sac as sacraments as well as the sacrament uh, and so the Holy Spirit comes in uh, to your act um, whatever it is so long as it's dedicated to God uh, but then you could take an act of torture or an act of murder or an act of execution and you could dedicate that to God and then you could say, well, that act was, a spirit, was, was, was an example of matter being spiritualized. So, you know, the torture chamber, the, the, the Judas chair uh, could be pressed into spiritual service if it's dedicated to God and if the person being tortured on the Judas chair um, is also dedicated to God and, and is being purified of his sin 
uh, as a result of being tortured to death. So you see, where, where does it end? <laughs> you know, um, you start off with, with a simple piece of wafer and, and, a, and, a, and a goblet of wine, uh, and you end up torturing people uh, to death. Uh, and that's spiritualized matter. And the acts are spiritualized acts. And, and so, you know, you, you could go into like that, like that mad group in, in Wales in the 1970s that was a paedophile ring. Uh, and they said that, the, that the, uh, abusing children uh, was part of the, their sacrament. Uh, so it was their magic, it was their spirit. They were taking these children as material, ma um, as the matter, the, the gross matter, and they were spiritualizing them uh, by abusing them. Um, so, you know, this was a cult that was in the 1970s. I mean, obviously they were, you know, people say, well, that's insane. Uh, but is it? Because it seems to me to be just a logical conclusion uh, an extreme logical conclusion of, of the communion uh, of transubstantiation, really. Um, which is why I think people have trouble with transubstantiation. Uh, as I say, it has to kind of occupy the sort of miraculous, uh, and it's a unique, a unique thing. Um, I mean, I don't think any other matter, the wafer or the wine, could actually, there's nothing else part, apart from the wafer and the wine that could be spiritualized, you see. Um, but other people say, well, no, you can take a, a, a wand cut from a, from a hedgerow and you can spiritualize the wand. Uh, so the wand becomes full of Holy Spirit. But I think in Catholic doctrine uh, and possibly the sort of Catholic Gnosticism, um, it is a unique event. Uh, the Mass, uh, the Communion uh, is a unique event. It's the only time when matter can be spiritualized and it's the only matter that it's the only two examples that can be. Uh, nothing else can be. And if it's outside the mass, uh, then, it, then, then it's not spiritual. Uh, but then you could have a black mass instead, in which you could say, oh, yes, uh, you know, the turnip that's used in the black mass, that, that's, that's the communion. Uh, that, that contains the Holy Spirit. Um, so I, I have my very grave doubts, and I begin to see that spiritualized matter, or the concept of it, uh, far from being a miraculous or, or concept of miracle, um, actually is heading very, very much towards materialist spirituality um, in which certain things are designated spiritual, but which actually are still part of the demiurge, still part of dualism, still part of the dialectical realms in which we are 99% conscious. Uh, of which we're ninety nine percent conscious. Um, so I see that that you know that the one percent uh, of soul uh, of God consciousness um, is very much uh, is a heart is very subtle uh, and very ether eth eth ethereal, um, and it is the butterfly uh, and it is hard to catch. It is the moth. Um, you know, it, it, it's 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 a very rare metal uh, to find. Uh, the rarest metal in the universe, in fact, to find. Um, and even people have talked about them, well, what about the Philosopher's Stone, which takes the gross matter and turns it into gold? Uh, that, again, is heading towards the concept of materialist spirituality, in my opinion. Uh, and it's not really miraculous. It, it's, it's more, it's okay to take it on the symbolic level, but if you're going to go into literal or miraculous uh, interpretations of the event, uh, then you're going to you're going to run into trouble. Of course, there is the Jungian idea of archetypes. Uh, that basically, all, all you're doing in, in the mass is focusing your mind on the archetype of Christ and the archetype of the Christ Spirit, the Christ Consciousness. Um, so it's not miraculous. It's not symbolic. Uh, well, it is symbolic actually. Uh, the whole thing is symbolic, which is the Protestant view of the communion that it is symbolic only. Uh, which is why they don't, obviously they break away from this transubstantiation idea um, because they cannot accept uh, that you can have transubstantiation. Um, you can only have that within, within the, at the soul level, within the human. Um, so, uh, you know, but this, <clears throat> you might say we're, we're splitting hairs. You might say that well, I'm just sort of, you know, creating, creating my own dualism in actual fact. Uh, and why can't you leave the poor Catholics alone to get on with their transubstantiation during the Mass? Um, well, perhaps you're right on that. Uh, I mean, if it works for you, if it is a focus for you, 
Uh, I mean, you could say, uh, you know, uh, uh, Constantine's mother found the true cross in Jerusalem. Uh, you know, for her, uh, it was the true cross. Um, you know, it, it, it was a focus on the spiritual for her, um, having found the true cross or a fragment of it. And people have said, oh, I found the Holy Grail, the Holy Shroud uh, of Christ. And, and, and that's kind of like miraculous. Um, but these are all sort of things to focus on, focus your mind on, to contact the archetype through. Uh, but in of themselves, they, they just symbolic. They, they, well, it's just a piece of wood. <laughs> Do you know, it's just a, it's just a, a shroud. It's just a well, it's it's a, it's actually a, a forgery. In fact, the Turin shroud doesn't really contain the, 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 the outline of Christ. Uh, it's just it is a forgery. Uh, but uh, for the faithful, it is a way of of focusing on the archetype of the Christ within. Um, and you could say that chakras and, and psychic uh, phenomena are also just ways. Of, but unfortunately, people don't take it like that. They take it in the literal sense, in the miraculous sense, in the sense of there being uh, other levels apart from the physical level. But my argument is that all the levels, uh, including the physical, including right up to the etheric level, are all part of distraction. They're all part of the demiurge. They're all traps for the human consciousness to get to, you know, to, to uh, find themselves in. Um, and they won't they won't get you to find the exit. You know, the exit is not there. Uh, what is there is hard to tell. Now, of course, uh, the biggest uh, question you're going to ask me is that uh, if, if, if the ineffable realm of God, uh, non dualistic realm is so other than our experience, um, that you might as well not have the experience at all. I mean, if 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 the the part of me that's aware of 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 this computer now, you know, via my senses, if I can't become aware of God on the level that I'm aware of this computer, uh, then what's the point? I might as well be dead and have no consciousness after after death because there's no part of me that's ever going to become aware of God. And the soul is so other than, than what I conceive of now and so other to what to my normal experience that it might as well be that, that God doesn't exist, that the soul doesn't exist, um, because, because there's no point. I mean, if I can't detect God or soul uh, through my normal consciousness, then, then it might as well be that God doesn't exist, that the soul doesn't exist. And, and so all this is for nothing, basically, all this conjecture and, and all this, uh, this belief basically amounts to nothing at all. Um, and you're almost kind of pawning yourself, you're almost coming back to materialist view, uh, that, the, that the matter is all there is, basically, uh, which could itself be a deception on the part of the devil to try and make you not believe in God. Um, so we do get into a lot of uh, confusion uh, and mental uh, distress almost as well when we contemplate these things rationally. Um, which again is why people say, well, you've got to look at it all on the intuitive level. Um, but I think that, uh, that the, uh, the argument is, uh, from the, uh, an intellectual argument, is that you do indeed take, the, the, take a part of the experience uh, that you have now of this material world, and you do take it to heaven. Um, so, that on, so that on one level, you do become aware of God, and the Holy Spirit and the ineffable realm and non-dualism uh, with, with consciousness that you normally uh, use, as it were, uh, to become aware of the, of the realm of the Demiurge. So, so you could say that that uh, part of your consciousness, which is perhaps neurological, biochemical, uh, is taken and made into something metaphysical, which brings us back to the idea of spiritualized matter, because... You're, you're taking uh, the algorithms of your brain, of your physical brain, and you're, you're, you're making them into some kind of metaphysical package um, which becomes aware, which is, which is uh, evolved enough uh, or, or um, uh, modified in some way uh, that indeed you, that it uh, can become aware of the immaterial, of, of the realm of God, and the non-dualistic, the ineffable. Um, so we do come back to this idea of spiritualized matter, 
um, or, or consciousness that is able to be somehow modified or, or transcended, some, made into some kind of transcendental, transcendental stuff uh, that enables you to become aware of soul, so that when soul returns to heaven, it takes a sort of bit of you with it. <laughs> it takes the uh, the bit that's formed through the through the processes of the physical brain. It takes that bit with it. Uh, takes that bit of you with it, so that you become uh, on some level aware of something which which normally you would never be aware of, uh, and in theory could never be aware of. You see, um, so in theory uh, you could never be aware of heaven or God because it's too other than you, and yet on another level. Um, the soul does take uh, a part of you with it when it returns to heaven. And indeed, uh, the, the, all the, the impressions throughout life and throughout perhaps many lives, if we're going to talk about reincarnation, is taken with you as well. And those impress, impressions, uh, those memories, if you like, are reformulated uh, to give you... Um, a working uh, conscious impression of what heaven would be like. In other words, it's like dreams. I mean, dreams are created uh, mentally through memories, aren't they? I mean, they're reconstituted memories, um, and a new narrative is created as a result of that reconstitution of memories, you see. So perhaps it's similar to a dream that, uh, that basically where after you die, you enter into uh, not the astral realm, but but in a higher dream state, uh, which is basically your part of your your dualistic consciousness being taken into a non-dualistic realm. Um, but I mean, you could say, well, you know, <laughs> again, it seems like you're splitting hairs. Again, it seems like your sophistic sophism, really. Uh, to talk about a little bit of your of your normal consciousness being taken into a, into, a, into a realm where normal consciousness couldn't operate, and you know it, it, it's um, you're creating arguments out of out of thin air basically, uh, and it's all conjecture anyway because you've no idea what lies ahead. You're talking about the future, um, uh, you know, uh, and you have no idea what the future is. You, you know, you're you're making it up as you go along, which is the argument. Um, but in terms of, of the problem, I think it's certainly true that, it, it, to, in my experience of, of esotericism, I find that this, there are plenty of distractions. I mean, everything is distracted. 99% of your consciousness and your senses and your emotions and even part of your intuition is distracting you from the truth. There is something, I'm fussy. There is something out there which is totally other. There is something out there which is possible to be aware of. But it, it's, like a, it's like a crack under the door, as I said before. It's a 1%, uh, it, the, the, you know, the, the, the key to the ninth gate, as some people would call it, uh, is so... It's like you, you, you just, it's like, you know, you just re keep rejecting it, saying, no, no, it's not that. <laughs> it's not that, it's not that, it's not that. Uh, and yet some and then suddenly you have a kind of clear and distinct idea as Descartes would call it um, and and something becomes very clear uh, you you have clear audience or or, or clear uh, um, yeah I mean you have you, something actually or clear or some clear vision comes to your mind and it and it comes from this other place and yet uh, you are aware of it as if you were aware of the table or the computer or anything material, you see. Um, so I, I, I leave this up to you to, to contemplate, really, uh, because I, I don't think that analysis can really... Uh, analysis maybe just fires your intuition. Um, but analysis, you know, as in like, oh, let's, let's uh, create some kind of computer or... Uh, some kind of sigil out of all this, uh, some kind of technology. I, I don't think any technology is going to come from this contemplation. I think it's merely going to sort of fire your, your imagination and, and get you thinking on the intuitive level, perhaps by confusing the hell out of you. I don't know. Uh, maybe it's a sort of kind of a Zen idea that I, I present all this complication, uh, but perhaps it's actually very, very simple. Uh, and, uh, and the simplicity... 
um, uh, well, the complication belies the simplicity of both analysis of problem and uh, conjecture about the solution, uh, which, of course, from this point of view, from the point of view of where we are now, uh, sitting in front of a computer uh, talking to YouTube, uh, from that point of view, it, it is probably meaningless conjecture, in actual fact, because when you go beyond uh, the abyss, you will know, uh, but it won't be knowledge uh, as we know it now. Uh, it will be a different kind of knowledge. Um, and, and I won't have any more control over that knowledge. I mean, at the moment, I'm controlling. I'm not drunk or high. Um, I'm just, I, so, so I'm in control. Do you know what I mean? Uh, and then perhaps when you cross the abyss, uh, I'm no longer in control as I define control uh, at the moment. Do you know what I mean? At, the, at, my, at this present moment of consciousness. Um, and that kind of be probably very scary, I would say, actually. Uh, a bit like tripping, in fact, when you have no more control over over your analytical mind, uh, and you're just seeing a, f a sort of flood, of, a, a stream of consciousness is coming into your mind uh, due due to the psilocybin or LSD breaking down th this ability of your conscious mind to make sense in quotation marks of the whole th of the world. Um, so I, uh, all I can do really is is leave you with this sort of contemplation as I've presented it here uh, and hope that on some level or another it might be useful to you because usefulness is at the end of the day is what we're really talking about here.